So in this video, let's have a quick look at an example of a convolutional neural network. So we've discussed some of the types of layers that go inside of a convolutional neural network and what the idea is behind this convolutional or con, uh, convolution operation. And that we're really talking about images here. Images really work well uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about uh, convolutional neural networks. So we're going to use one of the data sets that is available right inside of Keras. And that's the MNIST data set. I'm quite sure you've heard of that. That's just tiny little images of handwritten digits. They're all in monochrome, in other words, black and white. And they're all labeled. So someone wrote an 8 and a 7 and a 6, or I suppose all sorts of people. And those were just labeled by human beings as such. So let's import that. And we're just going to assign that to a computable ver computer variable called MNIST. And what we are loading is this data set underscore MNIST. And that data set already has, it's already been divided into a training and test set. So uh, with these built-in data sets, we don't have to worry too much about that. So all we have to do is just assign four computer variables. And as usual, I'm going to call mine x underscore train, y underscore train, x underscore test, y underscore test. And we see there that it's MNIST. And then as always with R, the little dollar sign that's shift of four, my keyboard, and then train, because the training set and then the feature which is the actual image is x and then it's the labels y so we're going to do that both both for the training and the test set so if we, if we look at the dimensions just of x train we notice 60,000 28 28 so what does this mean certainly this is uh, something larger than we've seen before in other words we um, we usually just had uh, the feature variable and there were say 70 rows or 10,000 rows comma so many columns and the columns those were the feet number of features but this indicates that we have 60,000 samples of 28 by 28 and that that is what these images look like they're little grayscale images they're 28 pixels by 28 pixels so tiny little squares and then each value is just between 0 and 255 as we saw before and that's just a brightness value so let's record those as just as uh, as computer variables. I'm going to call it image underscore img underscore rows and img underscore columns. That's just the pixel dimension. Because what we need to do, we need to reshape this as a tensor uh, in a format that our model is going to expect. Because what is missing from this 60,000 28, 28 is the number of channels. So we have to add that. So let's use the array underscore reshape function. So it takes x train as our argument. And then we have to pass in the number of rows in x train. So we use C uh, uh, function and then the n row function of x train. Then image rows, image columns, comma one. So we add that comma one at the end just to show that there's one channel. And we're going to do exactly the same for. Uh, we're going to do exactly the same for for the uh, for the test set there. And then we're just going to store uh, input shape because as we pass our first uh, layer or our first data into this model, we just need to know the input shape. And the input shape is going to be 28 by 28 by 1. That is the size of the images. In comma 1, there's one channel. And this is the way it is set up. If you use other frameworks, uh, some of them might use the one or the number of channels first and then the uh, row and column size. But here inside of Keras using TensorFlow backend, it is image width, image height, basically, comma one or comma three in case uh, it was a color image with three channels. If we now look at the dimensions of X-Train, we know that it's 60,000, 28, 28, 1. Next up, we have to, of course, we have to normalize our data sets. And because each value is just between 0 and 255, we can just divide by the maximum, which is 255. So that's going to bring everything in this 0 to 1 range for us nicely. I'm going to create a computer variable called numclasses as 10 because I'm going to use the 2 underscore categorical to do the one hot encoding. Remember there are 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we, uh, so there are 10 classes. And the way that we use 2 categorical is we're going to pass the, the uh, variable there that contains our labels, y train and y test, comma, the number of classes in this instance, they're 10. So that if we have a look at this first example in the training set, its label was, and it starts counting, counting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So one hot encoding for the first little image being a five. So let's create our model. 
and as always it's just going to be a sequential model so we pass uh, we're going to create a computer variable called model and it's going to be a keras underscore model underscore sequential we're going to pass a two-dimensional convolutional uh, layer next 2d because we have it is a 2d image it has two dimensions in other words it has a height and a width a width and a height and we're going to do 16 filters of three by three each so we have these nine values that are going to pass over our 28 by 28 but we have 16 of them so you can imagine we're going to run through it once and we're going to have a slightly smaller image our resultant image that we spoke about before but we're going to stack 16 of them uh, behind each other if, if you want to visualize that we're still going to use an activation function the rectified linear unit and now we put that input shape in of ours which was 28 by 28 by 1. Next up is going to be a max pooling layer so that's going to take a little two by two blocks and it's just going to take the maximum value out of that. Then we're going to have some dropout we can have dropout layers here as well and we're going to drop a quarter of of the values. And then we're going to flatten. So that 28 by 28 is just going to be flattened in the 756, just single vector, because we have to pass this to a, to a multi-layer perceptron, a densely connected neural network at the end. So our first dense layer there is just going to have 10 units with an activation function as always ReLU. We're going to have a 50% dropout. And then another dense layer, which is going to be just 10 units because that is what we want our output we have the number of classes is 10 and the activation there remember is softmax and if we run the summary on that we note that we have 27,320 27, learnable parameters and that is really not bad if we consider the size of our input vector 28 times 28 now this is a I'm going to say straight off this is a horrible uh, model this is not going to do uh, probably not going to do very well and uh, we we'll definitely add a uh, second convolutional layer there. Maybe add the number of uh, the number of filters there or the kernels, and then certainly have more than uh, ten units in my first dense layer there. If you really want to get some good accuracy, but this is just to demonstrate the different layers that we have spoken about. Compiling that, we're going to always have the loss, the categor categorical cross entropy. The optimizer I chose here, just for argument's sake, is the, uh, the delta optimizer, and the metric is going to be accuracy. We'll make a batch size of 128, and we'll run through 12 epochs, and then pass the fit function, pass the model to the fit function, and have a validation split of 0.2. So if you download to this actual uh, code, you can run that, and you'll have a look on our studio what the outcome is going to be. And then all I did at the end was just to create a score uh, computer variable here. We pass the model to the evaluate function and we pass x test and y test and we concatenate this, the test loss and the score dollar loss. So that's one of the values that is inside of the score and we see a test loss of 0.18 and we see a test accuracy of about 96.45%. So I encourage you to download this file or create your own, create your own uh, convolutional neural network. As you can see, it really isn't that easy. And start, start your first look at some uh, other convolutional neural network using the inbuilt, using the inbuilt uh, image data sets. In future, I'm going to show you how you can use your own images if they do live on your internal drive. How you can use them to pass it to because that's quite a bit different than just using these, these uh, inbuilt uh, images. Now there are lots of other image data sets available as well. CIFAR 10, that it, those images of 10 classes, CIFAR 100, these things are all built into Keras and I urge you to explore those.